Hello everyone. It is June 12th, 2018. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. And this month of June is going to be a month of Harp Tuesdays thanks to my patrons. You can become my patron too. Um, up here, I think. And for this episode of Harp Tuesday, I took out my, my faithful copy of Betty Bray's first Harp book, which is something that I started with. And in fact, you can see here, this is Barbara Allen, December 4th, 1990, when I first, first learned this. So Barbara Allen, it's a classic, uh, she says English ballad, but I think it's actually Scottish. Uh, classic song, classic ballad. And I thought I would just use this as an opportunity to talk about patterns, and shapes, and how you might approach learning this. So this might be an easy piece for you, or it might be a hard piece, but even if it's an easy piece, hopefully, some of what I'm talking about you can apply to other pieces. Let's look at, um, let's look at what the left hand's doing, for example. So we see these. And I would be thinking of that as being a root position D chord, right? We have D, F, A. When we place all three of these notes, that's a root position D chord. Now, you don't have to be thinking of it that way. But if you have something in your mind, so in other words, I often wonder what other musicians are thinking when they see these patterns. As you play, right, you, you want to constantly be trying to find patterns so that it's not just a case of, oh, it's a D, now it's an F, and what is it? It's a D in the left hand, that O and a G. So you're not reading kind of note by note, but you're finding some patterns to glom onto, right? And that's such a, such a helpful thing. So here I'd be aware of, this is a D root position. We get three of those in a row. So in fact, there it's kind of left hand memorized for that little bit. We get an A octave. She's got it two and then four. I'll talk about that in a moment. Then we've got another little thing where again, it's a root position chord. This is a G, this shape. And again, if you're not thinking of the chord, at least be aware of this shape where we're skipping every other string, right? This classic root position shape. Back to D. Second to last bar here. This is quite interesting because it starts with a D, but it's actually D, G, A, uh, G, B. So it's actually, I mean, it's a G chord. It's the second inversion G chord. Whether or not you're thinking of it that way, you can be aware that, oh, this is a different shape than we've always had previously. We've always just had one string between each finger. This one has two between three and two. And then we're back to this root position shape. And in the right hand, this is a great piece to think about shapes because we keep getting kind of groups of notes. So at the beginning we have four in a row, we have just a group of three, four, a group of four, a group of four, and then a group of three. So you could think of this as being a scale with a gap between four and three, right? Because we, we start in this D, we skip a string, and then it's just one string after another. If we add the left hand in here, Notice that if we take this G away in the right hand, it's actually the same three notes that the left hand is playing, right? It's, we've got a root position D chord in the right hand. So that might be another way to think about it, that it's basically a root position, but we've got this G in here as well. Oh, here is just a scale descending four notes in a row. You could be thinking about it. it's a D chord, and this this F and this D are part of that, and this G and this A, uh, G and the E, are more sort of maybe passing tones that aren't part of the main harmonic structure, but are leading us from one note to the next. And of course, patterns we've gone up and then we've gone down. Another pattern we started with D. with D. And of course, we're in the key of D, so there's a good chance that we might start and end the whole piece with D. Then we go up, and this is an interesting shape. So you might think, well, it's an E, an F, an A, a D. What's going on here? One way is to be aware of the physical shape of this, right? This interesting three and four are right next to each other. Three and two, there's a gap of one string. And then two and one, there's a gap of two strings. So again, trying to find that shape in the air as you go to approach this. And this is the case, of course, where it's great to find this as one shape, one unit, 
rather than going one finger at a time. It's just more effective and more efficient to find them as a group. Now, if we move that fourth finger down to D, this will be a four note root position D chord. So that's, or we could think of these three notes, three, two, one, as being a first inversion D chord, which again, that kind of ties in with what the left hand is doing, this D chord. All this stuff right here. Or maybe you just think of it as this kind of peculiar shape, right? Again, it doesn't, the most important thing is, is kind of trying to find patterns and how you describe them, it needs to make sense to you. And thinking in terms of chords is a very useful thing, but it, you don't have to be thinking about that. And if you can find a, a, a pattern and a way to see that shape or to anticipate that shape, that's the most important thing, especially when you're first starting. Ah, here's a one, two, three. Now this is kind of interesting. How could we think about this? Well, it's actually, it's this, it's, um, I was gonna say it's kind of the, what we did coming up, but not quite, right? We had, we had this A and this D, but now we have a C in the middle, or we could think of it as being almost a scale, but skipping, you know, having a gap between two and three, that kind of shape. We could think of this D as being left over of this previous part here, where we're still in, we've still got a D chord going on. And now here at this point, I think we're switching to an A chord. And if we find a root position A chord, A, C, E, we see that both C and A, these two right hand notes, are part of an A chord. Notice that her fingering suggestion is two, come off, and then four. We could of course do one and four. No particular uh, whatever works. It, it, this maybe gives us a slightly different feel then. But I would, if, if you prefer to go one and four, it's maybe a little bit safer. Perfectly fine. This little symbol here, this target symbol, is a muffle. It's not, I wouldn't say it's necessary. Was I bothered by having that A ringing all that time? I, I wasn't, not really. So, but if you want to practice muffling, it's an opportunity to, to do so. Anyway, that's what the symbol means. And you could go. I would probably. You have to listen to how, how I did it at the beginning as well. Did I muffle right on that beat or did I try to muffle as I play the second finger? Of course, that gets a little more challenging because we have to jump right up here and find this. Maybe it's nice to muffle if we're gonna muffle right on the beat. And I'm just doing a gentle muffle with sort of three and four. I'm not trying to do a big full muffle. I'm just stopping that A. So again, it's not at all necessary, and, and one could argue that actually that muffle sound is not as good as not muffling it. In other words, we're gonna hear that get stopped a little bit, and maybe we prefer just let it ring throughout this, but it could be good practice for muffling. Um, I generally don't muffle there, but I did just to try and follow the, the exact writing here. Then, so here's an interesting little spot, because, after playing this C, both hands find a root position G chord. So again, that can be a way to help tie the two hands together instead of feeling like they're these two separate things. Oh, look, they've both actually got the same three notes. And again, we'll play, we'll place two and one on the right hand, play two, then reach down with both two and three before we play the thumb. So that has to be fairly quick. This is the most difficult part in the piece, just for the right hand. Again, the same idea, we got two and one placed. You can see my teacher wrote in the brackets, just as a reminder of what's going on. Got to place both of these two. Now here's a new bracket. So before we play that thumb, we have to find two, three, four. Great chance to think about finding all these notes as a group rather than one at a time. And notice these three notes that we're gonna find, A, F, D, that is a root position D chord. that We've had so many of those, right? D, F, A, that position. So one way to practice this is K 
can you place and find those and play them as a chord? So we're training the fingers. They're off the string, right? They've, cl they've closed. And now two, three, four, opening, opening up, finding that shape in there and placing that precisely on that D chord. Because we have to find this quite quickly, play the thumb and then play two in a small amount of time. And again, here both hands, here we have both hands on this root position G chord. Now again, both hands are in a root position D chord. Aha! This almost looked like it was going to be the same as in the beginning. Right? We, where we have E, F, skip, we have the scap, two on A. Oh, but thumb is going to the uh, B instead of the D. Haha, -ha. interesting. So you might just think of that as, well, this is the, the weird shape that's squished, right? This first one was, was kind of a peculiar shape, but a little bit larger. And this one starts the same, but it's squished a little bit. That thumb is lower. Could be one way you're thinking of it. Um, if we were to analyze it harmonically, this is all, there's a D chord. And then this, I think it changes to G. So that's what's going on. That's why the left hand changes. We have to D chord. That's, harmonically, that's what's going on. So maybe tying it in with first time. The second time, both hands are going to do something a little bit different, right? Left hand has this uh, G you know, G and B, this part of a G chord, and right hand has the uh, the B on the top. Oh, and both hands find a root position D chord. And, and there it is. So just by analyzing it, finding those patterns, I mean, I, I, we can... Yeah, I was able to play that memorized. Now, I'm, I mean, I know it a little bit and I, I practiced a little bit before this episode, but it wasn't memorized. And just by analyzing it, as I was going, I was able to think, yes, that's this pattern coming up, this shape, this chord, etc., etc. So that can be just a great way, any piece, whether it's something like this or a, a very challenging recital type piece, finding patterns makes things so much easier. So, Hope you enjoyed that. Again, I'll be back next week, thanks to my patrons, and I'll see you then. Cheers.